Hey guys, and welcome to Overland and Zed. Anybody who's been here before will notice I've just jumped off the ferry and I'm in the South Island. Two weeks down here, and welcome to our latest project, South Island Solo. It is just me, no one else is with me, and I have got two weeks of exploring, catching up with a whole bunch of really cool people, and having a great time down south. So yeah, let's get out of Picton and um, make a move. Patreon helps support the future of this channel. Link in the description below. So, big hills, pylons, we can only be in Rainbow Road. So I came through a couple of years ago, it was absolutely incredible and I'm so keen to do it again. Just paid my 40 bucks to come through and we're gonna head south, Rainbow Road. South Island Solo, first track, let's go. So one downside of traveling by yourself, you can open and close all the gates. So me and Chloe came through Rainbow Road about four years ago, if I remember correctly. And it was our very first experience of remote New Zealand um, backcountry roads. And this is kind of where my absolute passion for this stuff started. So Rainbow Road, if you haven't had the opportunity to bring your truck, your mountain bike, your dirt bike, whatever you want to do through here, I would highly, highly recommend it. It is up there with one of my favorite tracks in the country purely because of just how expensive and pretty it is. I always love seeing all these little huts. Don't have spread around the place. It's good you can come spend the night if you need to, and you know, if the weather turns real bad or something. What's this? No, I love my rooftop tent, but if you had to, it's probably cool a little hot. way out of the wind, which is kind of cool. So I've finished Rainbow Road. It was pretty cool. Um, definitely not quite as rivery as I remember it being. But you know, we're basically at Molesworth Station and this place, this place is incredible. Especially at this time of year. I know that's all very dry, but the peace and the quiet out here is incredible. So that and the rivers and the huts and I don't know. It's just awesome. I've seen one other car, two other cars all day. And this is kind of why I wanted to come down here. It's so peaceful, so quiet, and you can just be alone. cool is that? That's where I've just come from. I'd love to come down here when it's not absolutely bone dry, but still, how cool is that? I guess that's where I'm going. rocked up at Lake Tennyson. Haven't quite got the place myself, but that's all good. It's um, hopefully not going to be too windy tonight, but I reckon this 
a nice place. Spend the night. Anyway, that's camp set up. It's time to grab my chair out the back and relax for a little bit. Maybe make some food. So I've had some food, just come down to the little creek slash lake. It's gone pretty cold very quickly. Might be a bit of a cold one tonight, but this place is pretty cool. Waking up early on my first day down south, the sun had just come over the hills and everything had a lovely golden glow to it. It was pretty amazing to wake up at Lake Tennyson. Day two, last night was pretty cool. It kind of cleared up for ages and all the stars came out. And then some fog came through, a little bit breezy, but what a cool spot. So I don't really have a plan today. Um, I need to be in Christchurch tomorrow at this stage. So I made it to Molesworth Road. This is where I was planning on coming down originally, but sadly you can't get from Blenheim to, well, this intersection at the moment, as um, Molesworth Road is shut due to the fire risk. It's a bit of a shame, but we're here. So I've got 8Ks to go. And we're heading down the Clarence Valley Road till um, we get to Hamner Springs. I don't think I've been this way before. I think the last time I came over Jolly's Pass, possibly. It's been many years. So yeah, this has been pretty cool. I can tell I'm definitely getting closer to things though. There's people around and a few more cars and stuff, but that's all right. So yeah, let's drop down to Hamner Springs and hopefully get some cool views on the way. I don't know how much you're gonna see out the window, but I just came around the corner. Been in the sun-ish all morning. Wow, kind of sun. And now it is um foggy. Can hardly see anything. Been on the road for the last few hours. Christchurch is just out over there somewhere in the rain and I am at the start of the road out to Lees Valley. I honestly know very little about this. I've just seen heaps of photos of it posted online and it showed up in my book so I thought I'd go and have a nosy. You see, just under the bridge, there's um, it's an old bridge. At least where the road used to go, maybe. It's kind of just up in there. Cool. So just come down, down the hill, over the bridge, and you head back up the other side now. Very strange being back in the Hilux too, like the last 
few episodes we've done, it's been the last six months, I have taken this off-road quite a lot still, but I've been driving the cruiser mainly, and um, it is trips like this, where I remember why, why I built this truck, and um, just how good it actually is at what it's built for. Off-road, I do reckon the cruiser is probably better, but as a tourer, there is no competition in it. This thing is just awesome. So join me on the world's most bumpy track. I turned off um, the Lee's Valley Road to come over nosy and the view is awesome, but this has been about a 10 kilometer an hour drive for how many kilometers it has been. And I also just discovered, someone knows it my mouth, that I drove right past the northern end of Lee's Valley before and entered down the southern end. So I'm basically backtracking north and then I'm going to get back on the highway and retrace my steps back towards Christchurch. So that's a bit silly. So, road not suitable for loaded vehicles. Hopefully, that means it becomes not just a gravel road. Like, it's kill, but it's not quite as cool as I was hoping. So, those are the river that they've been warning me about. It's definitely not hard at the moment, but I can see how in a nice bit of rain it would be. And I can also see why you can't run cars through here. So very nearly at the northern end of Lisa Valley now. I I'm not sure that it was worth the 120k detour or not. It hasn't, it hasn't been bad, but it kind of, I'm sure I'm gonna get a slack for saying this, it kind of feels like a Nevis Valley wannabe. I think. I really know how to describe it. it it's definitely not quite what I expected, but that's all right. After staying the night in Christchurch, I left camp relatively late. I needed to catch up on the news and see what was happening in relation to the country's lockdown. I came over Mackenzie's Pass on my way down towards Tekapo while trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I arrived in the early afternoon to a very quiet Tekapo. I decided to head up the Macaulay Valley and see what it was like. The track turned out to be very washed out and I decided it was worth heading back somewhere where I could get some reception and keep an eye on what I thought was going to be happening the next day. The valley absolutely blew me away. The views up there were amazing. So I've just come out of the Macaulay Valley. I was gonna stay the night, but it's a very long drive up there and it's very, very bumpy. So I'm gonna get back towards the but I'll find somewhere else. The following day, the announcement went out that New Zealand was heading into a full lockdown. Sadly, this meant that my South Island trip was over for now. Thankfully, we had a plan in place for this very situation. 
Unfortunately, that meant the Hilux would be staying in the South Island for the foreseeable future, while I jumped on a plane and headed home.